I'm Pastor Nate Starkey, and this is Hope United Methodist Church. We are blessed to share this time together and to explore the ways God's Word, our faith, and life all interact, and, and to walk this journey together wondering about life, about relationships, about God, and asking God to be with us in this moment and on our journeys in faith. And so, as we get started today, I'm going to invite you to join me in prayer. Dear, good, and gracious God, we thank you for today. We thank you for blessing us in more ways than we could ever imagine. We thank you for this time and this way in which we are together, and we thank you, God, for being with us in this moment to make this time holy. Shift us, shape us, help us, heal us, lead us, God, to be followers, to be yours, to be holy. Make this time holy. Make all we do be done in your name, for your glory, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, this is our continued sermon series in, in this season of Lent. And as we get into this week's message, I want to invite us to open with Scripture. Um, a scripture that I hope is familiar, but if it's not, I hope that you receive it in a way that is profound to you. It is, it is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, a, a portion of which we call the Beatitudes, and it reorients us to what true happiness is and where we find blessings. This is Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. 
his disciples came to him and began to and he began to teach them he said blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It's not quite the way the world looks at people, is it? That's not where... We tend to look for our blessedness or our happiness. But God's word shifts how we find true blessedness, true happiness, true peace. It's in peacemaking. It's in humility and vulnerability. It's in allowing ourselves to mourn and to be broken and open to being healed. And that's what this season is about. That's what our sermon series is about. Being blessed in our brokenness. And today's message is called, Happy Are the Healers. We've been in this time, this season of Selah. Selah is a tough word because Selah shows up in scripture 70 some times, mostly in the Psalms. The Psalms are all poems. They're all songs written ab about someone's journey in faith and in life. And those poetic expressions, those artistic expressions of, of life come with the highs and the lows that life offers. And often in, in these psalms, we see this word, Selah. And we don't have a really defined definition of Selah. We, we don't really have a, a, a concise understanding of what it means. But that doesn't mean we don't know what it means. We, we do by its context by where it shows up, by how we feel when that word shows up, by how the author of the song feels when that word is used. And when that word is used, in, in, that, in that moment, it's a call to rest, it's a call to pause, to take a breath, it's a it's a moment to shift. Uh, a lot of times when when that word shows up, it's a time when when brokenness has been expressed, and now it's time to go back to the healing words that the poet is offering. Selah. It means, by some understandings, forever. That, that maybe forever we are on this journey to, to realize our own brokenness and call out to God for help. Forever, as in maybe I'm lifting this up to the forever king, to God. It also means, by some understandings, to lift up to God. And so that Selah word, though we don't really have a concise definition, by its context and by its usage for the last 4,000 years or so, we have come to understand it to mean those things. To say, we're shifting from, from, 
finding our own brokenness, to reaching up to God, to calling out to God, to heal our brokenness, and to return to a place of healing from where we now find ourselves. Selah. We need that moment. We need this. And that Selah moment, though it may be vulnerable and uncomfortable. A couple weeks ago, we looked at how when... In, in song form, it's the blue note. It's that note that doesn't quite make sense to the melody. It doesn't quite make sense to the, to the scale that we're in. And it makes us want to return to that place of, of harmony. And so, Selah. It's necessary to the Psalms. And the psalmist, the writer, the poet, it's necessary to our hymns. It's necessary to our faith journey. And it shows, we're, we're expressing this, this Selah season in the season of Lent because they are the same. Selah is that moment in, in poems and songs, that moment. Lent is... That moment, that Selah moment, expanded over a whole season. Lent is that time in which we are digging into ourselves. We are looking deeply into our own problems, our own brokenness. And we are being vulnerable and expressing it and saying, I am broken in this place and I cannot fix it on my own. I'm going to lift it up to God. This Lent, Lenten season mirrors the Selah moment in those Psalms. And it does it for the six weeks leading up to Easter. Lent is a man-made season. There's nothing in the scriptures that says, Thou shalt follow the Lenten calendar. It's a man-made, contrived season. But that doesn't mean it's not holy, and that doesn't mean it's not necessary. It is valuable to the church calendar, and it's if, if, if it's embraced by you, the follower, it is valuable to the believer. This season is so important. It is so important to be on that verge of of vulnerability and to, to call to search ourselves and to collect all our brokenness and to lift it up to God as hard and as as difficult as it may be to look inward for that brokenness. But this is the season to do it. This is the Selah season. This is Lent. Because brokenness requires attention. Brokenness, when it is left hidden, when it's left buried deep inside, all it can do is fester. But when we take the time to do that work, to look inward and to self-evaluate and to reveal those wounds, that's when healing can start. That's when, that's when the, that, that work can begin. And that work is God's work. That work, while we are participating in it, the healing that we cannot accomplish on our own, we can only reach out to God for that healing. That's God's work. That's God's promise. That's God's hope and desire for you to do just that. To look at yourself and say, I can't do this on my own. I need you, God. Selah. This is a path to Easter. You see, God has done more than just promise healing or or want for healing, or to offer you healing. God has accomplished healing. Easter is bigger than we will ever know. And in Easter, in what took place at Easter, was more than just Jesus defeating death. 
right? Raising, being raised from the dead. Healing took place for more than just Jesus, but for all who follow that path. Lent is valuable. And Easter is good. If you just show up to Easter and you're just there, that's fine. But if you come to Easter, having done the work of Lent, Easter is amplified. There's, there's more potential for, for life-changing, spirit-altering work to take place, for, for Jesus to do that healing work in that moment. And so, how does that happen and why? Why, why is it necessary? How, how, how can we get in on this, right? Well, the first step of healing, the, the, the very first part of that is, is revealing the brokenness. It is, and, and that is done, as we see in the Psalms, by communicating. But if, if some are just writing, some are singing, some are just reaching out to someone they love and trust. And that's the path that's been laid out before us. If you are lost in life, if you're depressed, that's valid. That is a valid brokenness that we tend to hide. We tend to put on a face for the world when, when things aren't well inside. And we tend to hide that brokenness. Now is the season to share it with someone, to communicate it. If you are without peace, if, if you are without mercy, if you feel anxious and angry at the circumstances around you, blessed are the peacemakers there's not blessedness in that anger. There's not blessedness in, in that state of discontent. Blessedness is in peace and acknowledging that you are angry or that you don't have peace is the first step to finding peace. If you are dependent, whether you're dependent on a person or a substance or a system, whatever it may be, it's a hard cycle to break. But taking that step of, of communicating it to someone that you love and trust, and perhaps even more importantly, to someone that you know has been down that road before, someone that has battled that same demon. See, in faith, we are called to be both healed and healer, to model Jesus. You see, he did both. He was wounded and he was healed. And in, in that Easter moment of healing, he created a path, a model for us to follow. A path that has been revealed to all by the one who suffered for all, just as it was prophesied hundreds of years before he walked the earth. In Isaiah 53, we see the prophet Isaiah describing what is going to take place at Easter, describing Jesus and the life that he would live and the path that he would create for us to follow. And it says this, He possessed no splendid form for us to see, no desirable appearance. He was despised 
and avoided by others. A man who suffered, who knew sickness well. Like someone from whom people hid their faces, he was despised and we didn't think about him. It was certainly our sickness that he carried and our sufferings that he bore, but we thought him afflicted, struck down by God and tormented. He was pierced because of our rebellions and crushed because of our crimes. He bore the punishment that made us whole. By his wounds, we are healed. He suffered all. He suffered all. All the suffering the world has to offer, he suffered it for all, for every person who suffers. Christ suffered all things so that you may find healing in the places in which you are suffering now. And we don't have to suffer all things, but we still suffer some things, and some of us more than others. Some people suffer a lot of things, a lot of brokenness. But there's something that takes place in healing, in this gift of Easter that we are looking forward to. And it's more than just being healed. It is becoming a healer, becoming someone that can lead someone else down that path that Jesus created, that path to healing, that, that path to being made whole again in our brokenness. You see, the scars that you carry after being healed, they're imperfect. They can be downright ugly, but they show two things. They show first that you have been healed. Say my scars on my arm and, and something happens when I show that scar. It, it first shows that I've been healed. I was wounded and broken and I have healed, but it also signals to someone else who might be suffering that same way, that healing is possible, and it signals to them that you might be the person to talk to about that. That you might be the person that can lead them toward healing. Now, it's not all physical scars. When we talk about depression and anxiety and discontent and dependency, those are wounds and scars that are internal. And so communicating them is the step toward healing, your own healing and for the healing of others, for you to share your story. Your story might not relate to 90% of the people you meet. It might not relate to 99%. But if just one person hears your story and the wounds and the brokenness that you've been through and the healing you've experienced and they can relate it to themselves and they take that step of communicating it to you, you might not have all the answers, but if you've walked that path, you can walk with them to that path, down that path, to Easter, to Jesus, to the healer. That model, that model of, of being both healed and healer, that model that was created by God and modeled through Jesus on earth, It's being modeled in systems that work well today. In, in AA, if you are an alcoholic and you go to a meeting in need of help, you've taken that first step of, of communicating your brokenness. And they are going to pair you with someone, a mentor, that can walk with you 
and guide you and, and go step by step with you toward healing. But they're not going to assign you someone who's never had a sip of alcohol. They're going to assign a mentor to you, someone that is actively sober, someone who has in the past been actively not sober. Because that person has expressed their brokenness, sought healing beyond themselves. They've, they've recognized that they are not able to heal themselves and they need outside help. And in experiencing healing along their own path, they've become eligible and able to take a step back and, and bring others with them down that path. The same goes for you in whatever brokenness you are experiencing. When you take those steps to, to collect all that brokenness and bring it to Easter, when you, when you do Lent well, when you take those moments to say, say la, to pause, to call out to God, to pause and to listen to God, to say, I cannot do this on my own, And I need help. You are on a path toward healing in which you are being healed and you are being able to help others be healed as well. Easter is bigger than we will ever know. And embracing this Selah, embracing this awkward, uncomfortable, mysterious time, this season of Lent, this, this Selah moment, embracing it, it allows God's work in Easter to be more fully revealed. If we show up on Easter morning with everything still hidden, with everything still buried away, Easter's still going to be great. But there's so much more that could happen. There's so much more healing that could be take, taking place in that moment. I pray for you that you'll take this season to say Selah. Not just to say the word because it's a word, but to call out to God, to look inward, find the things you can't accomplish on your own, the places that you need healing, and to call out to God for that healing. And do that every day. Collect all those things. Bring them to Easter. Be healed. And become a healer. In Christ's name. Amen. of his grace my gracious master and my god assist me to proclaim to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name jesus the name that charms our fears that bids our sorrows cease Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of cancelled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the phallus clean, his blood availed for me. 
I invite us to close in prayer. I hope you'll join with me at home. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.